about to watch a Patreon live stream. If you're interested in participating in a future Patreon live stream, you should definitely consider joining my community at patreon.com slash Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. And before I get started, I want to thank everybody here on Patreon and thank everybody on YouTube for all your love and support. And again, I'm going to be tuning into Archangel Raziel, Archangel Orion, Archangel Azrael, Archangel Metatron today. And I'm going to relax and start with Archangel Raziel, who is a pretty fun Archangel that I've kind of gotten to know on and off throughout the last couple of years. And I forgot, I kind of I forgot about Archangel Raziel, not necessarily, but I, I hadn't been thinking too deeply about him until um, recently requests came through and it just felt right. So it's just an Archangel's day today. All right, here we go. Archangel Raziel. I welcome you to share anything, wisdom, healing, perspective, the unexpected, something beautiful, something challenging. What is, what is it that you feel is in the best interest of all of us today? Okay. He's having me look through a very, very tiny, like, um, like I'm bird watching, you know, binoculars. Yeah. And I'm looking through really small holes and trying to see through. And it's almost like I can see a tunnel, like I have tunnel vision, but there's a, there's a tunnel and I'm just looking through some very tiny holes in order to see. He's showing me being at the eye doctor now, and they're kind of changing, um, the different lenses. Um, now read the lines. Now, what letters do you see? <laughs> like this click, click, switch, switch. And it's getting harder and harder to see. And I'm really straining. I'm really trying. And I literally, I can't read anything. I mean, it's, I can see kind of a tiniest little blurs and there's a little bit of darker blue and lighter blue and some white in there. And that's about the best I got. It's just very blurry. Now he's talking about how we have people um, like eye doctors who are helping us to see more clearly, to actually see the physical world that we live in with greater clarity. He shows me how there's a convenience, there's an ease, there's an understanding, there's a logic to it. And we have a book, we read the book and we can see the words or we can't, we're struggling to make it out. We need to go to the eye doctor to get our eyes fixed. So who do we go to, to correct our third eye? And are we introduced to this as a, as a concept in our world? Um, some of us are aware of it. <laughs> some of us in this metaphysical genre, we think about the third eye. Um, psychic senses, even if you're not in that, um, on that path, you know, religion alone is kind of giving us an introduction to here's a physical world. Um, here are rules to live by um, in order to live a good life. Um, the golden rule, that sort of thing. But that's kind of a bridge into another realm where God lives, Jesus, Buddha, um, saints, right? Archangels. And so how are we to see beyond the physical world? And what tools, what doctor, um, what do we have access to to help us to see more clearly? He's talking about... Okay, let me see the best way to describe this. It's the concept of, well, how do you know you're talking to Archangel Raziel? How do you know you're not talking to a demon right now? Well, how do you know there's even a spirit realm? How do you even know God exists? How do you know anything actually is happening after you die? So how do you really know? You know, how do you even know that we have a third eye? So he's kind of sending me that vibe. Um, the type of personality that is just going to question 
<laughs> he's kind of making a joke and he's saying, well, how do you know you need to go to an eye doctor? Oh, so you're telling me you're having a hard time reading the book? Um, is that what you think is going on here? <laughs> so he's taking what is a, the human day to day um, to create an understanding of how ridiculous that sounds. If you're having a hard time reading, yeah, you need to go to the eye doctor. Now that makes sense. Two plus two equals four, right? But now when you're wanting to see beyond, um, there's this, uh, it's like a frequency pattern of disruption. And how do you know? The thing is, I, I feel like um, my, my initial response to this is I don't, it doesn't matter. And that what it, it's like, this is my reality. This is my experience. And so if you question my experience, then that's fine. You, you go question my experience. I don't question my experience. I'm actually developing um, a gift, a talent for translating frequency patterns. So a frequency pattern is, and I like to talk to people about this with psychic mentoring. Um, you know, we see everything here is quite crisp and clear when we open our eyes. Even if you need glasses, this world is, it, um, it's visible to us. And we can hear things in our ears. You know, we can smell with our nose. We could taste with our tongue, right? Um, so how do you have that alternate experience? What, how do you take that and then put it into a psychic experience? Is something you have inside yourself. So a fantasy world. Imagine being a teenager because when you're a teenager, like all these senses are super ignited and it's all about falling in love. It's all about romance. It's all about, the, oh, cute. Um, oh, I want to um, go on a date with you. <laughs> and all that stuff is amplified. So you're in class and the next thing you know, 15 minutes go by and you weren't even paying attention because you're in some fantasy world with touch, taste, smell, sound, sight. That is a psychic thing. But we define that as an imagination. We don't, we don't create the bridge between what is, what is it that we're holding on to to define our reality? It has to be tangible. It has to make sense. So something beyond the reality is already, it's already, uh, we don't have any proof. We don't know for sure. How do we really know for sure? And how I, how I respond to that, which we're going to continue to go into, um, is I, I mean, I used to help people to understand that, that definition. How do I know who I'm talking to? Um, let me show you so that you can experience it for yourself and um, so that you can explore something beyond what your day-to-day -day is all about. You can find something inside yourself. Does it matter if it is the spirit realm or not that you're tuning into? Because the wisdom and the healing and the experience that you're getting out of this is transforming your life. So if we want to define it as a spirit realm, we want to define it as our imagination, then let's not define it. Let's just define it as transformative. It's like we have to have these labels, but it's changing my life. So here I am. I can share wisdom. I can share healing, um, but I could be criticized. Oh, well, who are you really talking to? Does it matter? Is, is it what I'm saying, what I'm presenting? Is it giving you something to think about? Is it taking you outside the box? You're the master of your own universe. It's your reality. You can do whatever you want with this. Why question it? Question your relationship with the message. Does it feel right to you? Does it not? Is it your path? Is it not your path? That's how you, that's how you feel in alignment with something or you move on. Okay. Let's see what, what else he wants to say about this. He says that, he says that, okay, he shows me uh, the eye doctor and we take away the eye doctor. We take away the human eyes and now we're blind. How do you see? We take away our hearing, we take away our voice, we take away the sense of touch, take away smell and taste, we take it all away. Now what are you going to do? How are you going to have a reality? What is your reality going to look like if you can't see, if you can't hear, taste, speak, smell, if you have no senses, but you're a body? 
how are you going to live a reality? What's that going to be like, do you think? See, this is where the ball's in your court. Am I channeling Archangel Raziel or am I giving you something to think about? Something to ponder about? Something to give you room to grow for yourself? Not because I gave it to you, but because you chose to receive it, think about it, and now you're growing for yourself. Archangel Raziel is wanting you to explore this. If you were to turn off all these senses that connect us with the physical world, then where are you? What is consciousness? What is the body? What is consciousness? You still have the ability to think. What would you think about if you have nothing to, if you don't even know what anything looks like or sounds like or tastes like, what would your mind contemplate if it has no memory um, to define color or, or faces or what would your reality be? What tools would you have to create an existence? He's uh, smiling and showing me an idea about an alien race. This is what it's like, where they, they are completely in the dark, so to speak. And they are so, their only sight is their psychic sight, which is their soul. They just use the form in order to exist in that space. But they are entirely connected to literally everything without any psychic, without any physical um, like sight or smell, etc. But yet they exist. It says practice, practice what it might be like, pretend, be a kid again, pretend you have, you can't see, you can't hear, you can't taste, you can't smell, pretend. Now exist. What comes to you when you choose to just exist? You could even say try to exist. Play pretend. See what comes to you. Now you're on the path of what is beyond the human world. Well, how do you know it's real? Does it, does it matter? It's my existence. It's what's beneath the surface of all this other stuff. And it's transforming the way that I feel about myself, my reality. It's helping me become a better person literally because i'm taking the time to care about something more than just this i'm caring about something more than just myself than just this world hmm. <laughs> pretty cool huh <laughs> I'm going to be channeling Archangel Orion next. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I want to see what Archangel Orion has to share with us, whether that's uh, um, transitioning from Archangel Raziel into um, a message of its own kind um, or talking about psychic senses. All right. Let's see what comes. Oh man, so much different, totally different experience. <laughs> I feel like um, I could be hysterical, but I'm really composed. That's the vibration right now. Like I want to bust out laughing, but I'm like super composed. Um, I, I even experienced being a kid and it's like, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh. And it, 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 I don't know why this happens, but when your parents get mad at you, and you're a kid, you just want to laugh hysterically, but you try, you're like, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh. This isn't funny. I know this isn't funny. I don't want to, I don't know why I feel like laughing right now. <laughs> so it's kind of like one of these moments, except nobody's in trouble here. You know, it's like, I just feel like laughing, but I'm trying to compose myself. All the while, the energy is quite, um, I guess, simple. It's like um, consolidated. It's flat. So the dimensionality of it is very basic um it's a cream color that i'm being shown and it's a rectangular shape hmm. he shows me a really super bright star above my head above the head of, of humanity 
It's pretty. I mean, it's like the Christmas star, but it's in, in real life, like seeing it almost like dynamically moving as this like four starred piece of light. And it literally is four four sided, and it literally is a star, and it and it's kind of morphing and moving, but it always holds its point, kind of like a compass in a way. It's very bright and beautiful. He says nothing can hurt us here, and he's taking me into a basically a space that has a dome, and it's a membrane of energy. And he shows me how sealed tight this is. It's like your best Tupperware. <laughs> and I feel the energy shift from being completely uh, surrounded by infinite threads of information to it's just me. It's just Archangel Orion. And it's silent. It's like, wow, never realized how wonderful silence can be. And, and this isn't just silence, like, uh, it's sensory silence. Like, I don't sense trees. I don't sense breeze. I don't sense animals. I don't sense people. Um, you don't even realize this just walking through Walmart. You're kind of noticing the other people's behaviors and other people's body language. And you're kind of altering your own body language without realizing it. Or you're like so focused that you're just going to go in and get out. All the while, there's still these interactions taking place. You still have to find what you're looking for. You still have to make eye contact at times walk around people there's still energetic act um there's still this relationship like we are still um around each other you know but here it's all quiet vibrationally sensory silence this he says nothing can hurt you here there's nothing that can hurt you And he wants us all to experience this, just yourself. So there's a, and it's a semicircle space and it is um, a spherical, it's a half a sphere. Uh, so then, and it's got this like, um, I mean, it's clear, but it almost looks rubbery in a way. Um, and it's just like a little hill over top of me. It's just me. And so there's one for me, there's one for all, everybody, individually. He says it's, it's important you take a break for, from sen sen the senses. And he's even challenging this, the human senses and the psychic senses. How do you take a break from being an empath? How do you take a break from having a hunch or an intuition while simultaneously you're talking on the phone and listening to which friend or family member has to say all the while you're thinking about how busy you are today or you know, gosh I wish I could take that vacation all the while you know just stop it all do you even stop it all when you're sleeping but he shows me that you can create an experience where you are allowed to just have it's almost like i want to just say exist exist without interaction without having to see or smell or taste them um, physically or spiritually just just be in the space and it's quite refreshing It stops the process. It literally, it stops all processes. It even stops time. Everything stops. He's kind of smiling because you still exist. So your existence hasn't stopped. So in a way, how does anything truly stop? Because it will always still exist. But this is an interesting concept because it is important to, you know, on one level, let's say 
you work really hard all year, even worked overtime and you got one week of vacation to get out of town. And you're so glad that you just did that for yourself because you didn't realize how, um, how you really needed that, how much you really needed that. And so you take a break from life, right? But life is still in motion. You're still going on a vacation. You're still doing things while on vacation. You still have to return. You return a new person because you're getting out of the routine, right? So it's like um, this energy space is to get out of, of all routines, um, all identities, all timelines. It's just simply to have it's, it's literally I don't have any sensory experiences except the, the relationship that I have with my own consciousness everything is so quiet he takes this bright star from above my head and then he places it into the heart of my soul even this light is it's like it's my own light Everything here is my own experience. Everything here is like a break. And I feel the star in my heart. It's refreshing. I feel the simplicity. I feel it all slowing down to the point that it's, it's already stopped. Even I am slowing down inside myself, stopping inside myself. He's talking about meditation and how do you stop thinking even inside yourself. It's, it's like thinking is not, uh, it's, it's kind of like this. We speak, the thought now becomes a physical sound, right? And the thought is inside our, ourselves. Where does that come from? You say your brain, right? But where does the fantasies, where does the inner sensory experience come from? You could say your brain, your imagination, right? So how do you stop the function of thought and even seeing things inside yourself? I'm um, seeing colors, seeing feelings, seeing people, seeing responsibilities, seeing the to-do list inside yourself as you're trying to just stop the connection with the flow of your relationship with yourself and the world around you. He says it's very important to try. Every day try. To have this moment where you have no, no responsibility to anything and to anybody, not even to yourself, because who is yourself? You're letting go of everything having to do with the human dynamic. You're even letting go of the psychic dynamic. You're letting go of everything in order to be in a, a space where there is no giving or receiving. It's like a completely neutral environment. It is 110% still. There's no, no frequencies here. All that's here is me. And then the starlight in my heart. And I feel an incredible refresh of everything. Like this is the ultimate shower. Like this is the ultimate purifier of our energy field, of our bodies, of our soul. It's almost like by unplugging ourselves from life, we refresh our battery, our soul battery, our energy, our life, life force, our light. And then we participate again, right? He says, this is a, he's showing me the experience of harmony. And 
This can amplify your relationship with harmony and your relationship with everything in your life to unplug for a time. Even if it's just a minute or two minutes, you're choosing to unplug and just stop the thoughts, the images, the sensation of your of reality, all that. He's uh, removing this dome. And it's like I'm on a lily pad in the universe. And I see everybody, I see every individual lily pad has a soul, has a person. And we're all seeing each other now. And each lily pad is kind of like the palm of a hand. And there's this sort of um, like... Uh, is a system of connection between all the different lily pads or and palms of hands. And there's so many out here. And we're now starting to see each other and we're kind of nodding like, oh, you were, you were chilling out too. I was chilling out. And we're all a part of this weird lily pad thing. Like we're all connected. But what's interesting is we are just silently smiling and acknowledging each other, not by saying anything, but just by you know, smiling and looking at each other. And we feel relaxed. We feel like we don't have to be anything more. We don't even have to acknowledge anybody that's here. And if you don't acknowledge anybody that's here, that's not um, making people feel like they, are, they don't matter. Oh, well, nobody acknowledged me. Um, but we did because we were acknowledging ourselves, which is acknowledging you. And we weren't um, overstepping that silence, the serenity. We weren't, which is respecting you, which is respecting ourselves, which is our divine balance. How weird would it be? If we all were walking around in complete harmony, we wouldn't have to say anything to each other. We wouldn't have to acknowledge each other. We wouldn't owe anybody anything, and we wouldn't expect anything from anybody. We'd be quite silent, I feel. Because what else is there? There's just harmony. There's no need to paint. There's no need to create music. There's no need to do anything more. Because it's harmony. It's serenity. It's, it's like a, a meditation of sorts as a life existence. I really like this. I keep seeing this uh, peculiar image and it's like a community and there's a lot of um, kind of sandy colors to it. And there's uh, people with bald heads, males and females, and they have like um, khaki colored skin and they kind of blend in with this khaki color um, place. Everything's very dry and everything, everybody has this small smile and these bright and cheerful eyes. And they are walking throughout the community. And I'm shown that nobody owes anybody and nobody expects anything from anybody. And they are all, all collectively tuned into one another and they understand the needs of everybody as well as themselves. And so all needs are always met and all needs are supported without the, the need to support other than to create, basically. And it always maintains this harmonious frequency. They don't seem to do anything outside the box. They have families, they, they have buildings, um, they are around one another. They don't talk, but their eyes are so beautiful and they're so bright and cheerful. And they always have this like pleasant little smile on their face. 
And it's just like, everybody knows what everybody is, is feeling and thinking. And they sense it as though it's like a part of themselves. They sense it as though it is inside themselves, this inspiration. And they all just know that they're going to build another um, home in the city. And it's just like people just simply know. So it, and they show me, this is interesting. Um, I'm shown that um, there, it's like, they're showing me this, this race is, it's not just a small community. It's getting more and more vast. And because they do have children and they do have a calling, how do they even know what the calling is? And some just know that they are going to assist with building this building. And some um, just know they're going to assist with um, food and farming type. It doesn't even, I don't even see any farms here. But there's just like this innate knowing going on that people do certain tasks without even thought, without even asking questions, without even feeling like, well, how come I'm this and you're that? It doesn't even exist. There is no this or that. There is no yes or no. There is no... Um, I feel left out. No, I feel abundant. There is none of that. There's no need for more or need for less. It's always harmonious, always. And there's always this innate knowing and that just inspired to do a thing. And it's groups that feel inspired to do this thing and groups that feel inspired to do this thing. And it builds and expands this community. And Archangel Orion is, is, is having, wanting us to imagine the whole human race like this. Imagine if we are all just harmonious. We don't need to speak. We don't need an education. We don't need math or science. We just exist by an innate knowing. And nothing really defines you or does not define you. Because everybody is just a collective of, of connected knowing. Would you feel like there would be, um, you wouldn't want that kind of environment? Would you, do you feel like um, it would feel maybe off to you to live like that? And then why? Does that give you a, um, a desire to embrace being human more? Because there's this strange free will and this independence and this need to be an individual, this need to be different, this need to find ourselves and our purpose and all this complexity. And you go from simplicity, you know, the, the cream color, the flat rectangular shape, you know, <laughs> take simplicity and now create com a complex reality, the human versus this other race of harmony. And, and Archangel Orion is, is smiling because it's like everything exists in the universe. And it's, <laughs> everything is wonderful. And it gives you a new appreciation for the complex human um, environment and experience versus um, a different type of experience, like this community of people, this race of beings. Or maybe even a race of beings that has no physical senses, but exists. And yet somehow, what is their existence exactly? It's pulling in some inspiration from within. And all the others in this race are connected. And they, they ex feel and experience that connection. How do they do it? How do we do it? even showing us now the complexity of, of the physical experience and now the spiritual experience, the yes and the no, I'm hurt, I'm happy. There's now layers to this human experience. That's amazing. That's special in its own right. It's a way of living. It's a way of experiencing. It's a way of being. All right, I'm gonna go to Archangel Azrael next. Hope you guys are doing good out there. <laughs> this is a lot of fun so far. Okay, let's see what Archangel Azrael has to share with us. Okay. 
So different. <sighs> so different. Okay. All right. So I see um, thick black lines. Okay. And there is a sensation of heavy mallets for a big drum. And the mount the, these like mounts are like up and down and up and down and they um, and they're creating these black lines, okay? And it's like, but it's, it's this beat, this heavy beat, and then this heavy beat, and then this heavy beat. And it's like the heartbeat. It's like the walk. And it's just a pulse. It's just a beat. There's no other sounds. It's just the beat. It's like a deep sounding drum. And it's not fast, it's slow. It's like a boom, boom, like this. Oh, he's like, ooh, I love this. I love this. Experience that next time you go for a walk, next time you need to escape from reality. Just play that inside yourself, boom. Boom. That's it. Just that. And play that for a half hour and see what it does to you. See how it changes you. See what it means to you. What does it inspire out of you, out of your experience? How does it touch your reality in a different way? Something just like this. Boom. Boom. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me feel so funny. I think of a Jurassic Park. <laughs> I think that's why. So I'm telling Archangel Azrael's like, I see the little cup of water <laughs> and the vibrations and since the T-Rex is coming. <laughs> I guess it inspires me to think of funny things. All right, I can be serious. I can be serious. <laughs> he says, why? Why do you have to be serious? You say, maybe because I, I know that um, the experience of just boom, boom, you know, it's, it has many sides. It isn't, it can be funny if we, we let it be. If our personality or our, our insecurities or our ego or our, our natures, whatever, just go there with it. Whereas somebody else might go somebody somewhere totally different with it. They could put, turn into an erotic fantasy, you know, where somebody else can, you know, start to paint, where somebody else is now meditating with it, um, where somebody else is crying, you know? Um, so it's like, he's like, that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I mean. And he's smiling again. He's like, oh, so many beautiful colors, so many beautiful ways of perceiving some, something just like this. Um, something so simple as boom, boom, <laughs> and having an interaction with that, and then all the different ways that it is affecting the soul, affecting the personality, affecting the human. <laughs> I I feel so giddy about it. I'm I'm taking the boom, boom. No, I'm taking it out to the, the community of, of harmonious people. I just want to see how it changes the reality if it does anything. <laughs> oh, Archangel Ryan is telling me that uh, this race has been completely separated from interaction. It's almost like, uh, it's like, how was life breathed into this? What, what inspired this? What even brought this here? And these people, they, they have no, he's showing me they have no... Uh, spaceships like they don't travel the universe um, they i don't even i question where they even eat exactly because it, i experienced just one frequency and it is harmony and it is an innate knowing and i see that they have not had an interaction i mean archangel ryan is showing me that nobody has interacted with this race of beings they exist in their own pod of reality so I'm actually attempting to go into that with this um, sound um, with Archangel Azrael. And what's interesting is Archangel Orion shows me that this is a protected race, that they are inside the, the Tupperware, <laughs> the Tupperware that is um, seals quite well. 
and nobody is to tamper with this nobody is to tamper with them um he's showing me that that souls have requested um, an incarnate experience that is just harmonious and that's it therefore this cannot there cannot be a ripple of difference it cannot be different it is a protected race because the frequency is protected so if I bring boom, boom in there, that, that, that it goes against the grains, like I wouldn't ever be allowed to. I can't even feel that inside myself, that it makes my soul feel very disgusting to try to, try to do this. It's like, I understand that, actually. That's, that's pretty cool. But now it gets me wondering about um, the human race, you know, are we, are we a protected race? <laughs> what, is, what do you have to say about that, Archangel Orion? What do you have to say about that? He says, you can go into a Tupperware container anytime you want. You choose to protect your own energy field. You protect yourself. If you choose that, then you are a protected being. He kind of says that an individual human being is also a race of beings. So you can do that to protect your race of beings. And I see just a single individual human in a Tupperware, like, like the semicircle, like the bowl is over top your head. And it's just this clear um, energy and it separates you from any other sounds with, from anything else. It gives you time to just exist as your own individual self in a way. He's talking about the dynamic of this other race as well. So what is the individual in that race? If they are all collectively sharing the individual, they are one individual as a race of beings, as a race of beings. And they are exploring as that one individual, simply harmony, that one individual existing in the bowl of energetic protection by choice. And now... Um, it, reminder we all individually have the right to do this and what what the experience is for our, our inner collective our inner race is similar to what we see in this um, race of beings that's what happens within ourselves and we can remove that tupperware container at any time and now we can listen to boom boom and now we can be dynamically transformed by simply that in thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of different directions. And a single, single person, a single soul can experience it in a thousand different ways. Again, really emphasizing how truly incredible it is to be human. How truly dynamic and complex and how wonderful it is to be confused and how wonderful it is to not know. How wonderful it is to have yes and to have no, to be self-destructive, um, to fall into um, addiction, um, to conquer addiction, to see yourself in a new way, um, to switch up your style, you know, to be like this and now to be like that, you know, to lose a lot of weight and then gain a lot of weight, to enjoy ice cream, to enjoy meat or vegetables, to enjoy both, you know. Um, that is why being human is so special because you get to be everything. If you want to be everything, you can be everything. Individually, as an individual, you can be everything. You can be anything you want. You can do anything you want. I'm going to ask Archangel Azrael if there's anything else you would like to share. And then I'm going to visit with Archangel Metatron. <laughs> Why? He's so silly and smiley. I think he's the one that's making me feel like I want to laugh and do silly things. Uh, he's talking about the mirror and what inspires us um, to, to speak um, to reflect it, to be certain ways and how we are influenced by each other. Now we are all influenced by each other. So how do you find yourself? How do you find out what is you? 
What is actually just you in all of this? He's now serious. And I don't know if there's a track of some sort of sound blip, but if, if anybody could access a drum and just do one pound on it and then duplicate that sound like every five seconds, um, he, highly, he highly recommends that we allow ourselves to let go into that sound, even for a half hour, feel weird feel transformed by it, feel different, feel perplexed, feel like you're losing yourself to it. Let it change you from within, not because you can understand it, but because you are instinctively having a relationship with it. That doesn't have a thought process. It is just a, an, a digestion. It's something beneath the surface of the human. He says, think about it, <laughs> as he's also reminding us that this transformation process with the boom is not a thought process at all. It's an experience. <laughs> that is cool. All right. <laughs> Archangel Metatron it is. Okay. Oh man, such a different energy that I love to feel the different vibrational personalities of each of these archangels that I've connected with. I, I feel old in a very expanded and wise ancient way. And I always find Archangel Metatron presents himself as a very, very old man, but he's also so handsome in his the energy that he expresses is so beautiful. Like he, he doesn't matter the appearance because there's just so much beauty there to behold, you know? I love that about him. Archangel Metatron um, challenges me because um, he will put on different costumes, like, um, but I often see him as very old, like a very old man or a very old woman. And he um, makes it so you can't translate his energy. So you can't tell because he wants to challenge the way you're thinking and perceiving things. Um, but he can shift. So he can become, um, I mean, I've even had Archangel Metatron become like a, a scary being what, when I was first starting to do journeys. And um, it was a really hard lesson. And there was lots of ravens. And I was even disturbed by the ravens. Um, like I'd gone to Walmart, you know, my favorite place. <laughs> and there were ravens in the parking lot. And I felt creeped out when I was looking at them. Like, like there was something um, peculiar there. Like I didn't want to see the ravens. I didn't want to see these birds. And they seemed to follow me home. Like they were in my energy field. And there was this sort of like scary being that and kind of was appearing in my dreams. And I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to figure this out and understand this. But it was an aspect of Metatron that was there to challenge me to rise above my fear. And he has a way of challenging us. And I am so grateful for that. I mean, I'm so grateful for that because I went through the process, you know? I didn't just whisk it away. I actually went through that door I transformed myself, you know? All right, Archangel Metatron, what would you like to share with all of us today? He's looking, he's looking at the um, DI doctor with, you know, Archangel Raziel. He's nodding. He's flipping through some pages. He's writing some things down in his appointment book. He's taking notes. He's not going into Archangel Orion's message. He's not going into Archangel Azrael's message. He's thinking a lot about improving one's eyesight and our perception. And the perception of how we see life on earth, how we embrace that life or resist it, 
how we are open to seeing how um, souls exist in other ways throughout the universe. And sometimes those ways are extraordinary. And then sometimes they give us the gift of really appreciating the way it is for us here. And how interesting that is. He likes, um, he, he's kind of talking about Archangel Ryan now. Because when he does not hear Archangel Metatron, when Archangel Metatron does not hear a single human being, not even one human being on all of planet Earth. So when there is not a single human being that says, I hate life. Now that is music to Archangel Metatron's ears. Not even one single human being say, I hate life. This is, wow. Wow. That's, that's his happy place. And he really wants to encourage us to never say that ever to embrace life, to love life, to say, I love my life. He, it makes him happy. It makes him feel bright inside. He says it's worth it. And he says, any parts of you that are saying otherwise, you will be introduced to those parts so you can bring them on board with I love life as your new your your new presentation of self the the bandwagon that you're you're getting on for life i love life i love being human i love planet earth i love the human race he says he says that positive energy is so powerful and do not get manipulated by what is beneath the surface of i love life i love life i love the human race Genuinely, I love life. I love planet Earth. Genuinely say that. Genuine, genuinely say that. He says that when you don't say that, um, that it's almost like um, you'll never be happy. <laughs> If you don't say, I love life, I love planet Earth, I love being human, that means that you don't love it. And if you don't love it, then what does that mean? You dislike. So if you dislike, then you will never love. Holy, fully love life love life holy he's showing me the star in my heart and how the star is bright when we own it that we love our ourself our world our life the human race this planet earth And he's even challenging us, you know, I love coronavirus. I love people who challenge me mentally and emotionally. I love people who cannot speak the truth. Because he's talking about, I hate those people. I hate this world and the way we're dealing with this coronavirus issue. I hate, right? I love, I love. He says, you have to say it. In a way, like, uh, He's showing me, he's showing me divine truth, okay? Because the human relates to yes and no, I like, I don't like, they don't love me, I don't love myself, but I do love myself. But I, the, these conflicts of the human dynamic. So that gives us the right to like or dislike, but to ascend, to truly embrace 
beauty, love, light, the divine truth of love itself is to love. Not to say I love all this stuff, but I don't love that stuff, but to love, to love. All right. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this. I'm so excited to see everybody who could come. <sighs> Thank you, Dylan, Jean, Kyle, Stephen. Thank you all for coming. I feel so transformed by that. <sighs> I want to wish you all a very beautiful day. Everybody who could come. Um, everybody who couldn't come. Um, everybody on Patreon, everybody on YouTube, thank you all so much, and um, have an awesome day. <laughs>